Hello, everybody. Good evening or good afternoon, whatever your time is. This is Maria de Blasi again. I am part of the Bridge to Health New Mexico. Today, we have what I consider one of the most important talks for us to go through. Um, today, we're going to talk about the real benefits of exercise. Now, there's a lot of benefits, and it's definitely not something that can be covered in half an hour. But I did break it up in sections, and we will be going through them relatively quickly. We only have half an hour of session today. But remember again, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Leave us your doubts. Leave us your questions. And um, if you need further comments or if there's anything else you would like to talk with us about, feel free to get in touch with us at our office on Bridge to Health, New Mexico on 628 Riverside Drive in Española. You can drop by. You can send us an email at bridge to health nm at gmail.com or you can give us a call for your comments and doubts at 505-591-4200. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we're gonna start this. So today we're gonna to be talking about the real benefits of exercise. So there are many benefits to exercise. And like I said before, we can only cover a few of them, but we will be going through them in detail. So first what we need to do is we need to clarify what is exercise and what is physical activity and what the difference is. Now, the difference between physical activity and exercise is the structure that we go through with it. Exercise is a physical activity that is controlled, structured, and done with a goal of improving our health. Walking up the stairs is physical activity. Going to a spin class is exercise. Now, both are beneficial. Any kind of physical activity is going to be wonderful for you. Even if it's only 30 minutes a day, it is proven that moving in any way, shape, or form is good for your health. Um, another thing that we need to keep in mind is any kind of movement that is done during the day does not have to be at a specific time. Um, it is usually better when we do it in the morning because all the benefits of it, you'll see further ahead when we talk about energy and all that, um, lasts you longer. But as long as you're being physically active and as long as you're act exercising, it doesn't matter really. Now, physical activity is just basically walking through your neighborhood, going up the stairs, like putting away the groceries, gardening, carrying a toddler, all qualify as sources or some kind of physical activity. Any form of energy expenditure, in other words, movement, can be classified as physical activity. So, which one is better for us? It has been proven that exercise is much better than physical activity. Although, going back to what I just said, any kind of physical activity is gonna be beneficial for you. So, first thing first, we need to get moving. Now, we say 30 minutes of activity every day. 
It does not have to be all at one sitting. You can structure it in such a way that you do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes after lunch, and 10 minutes in the evening after work. Or you can do, if you have more time in the morning, you can do 20 minutes in the morning, and then 10 minutes in the afternoon. It does not matter how you structure your exercise, as long as you are doing it in a controlled and performed way. Now remember, there's a difference between just walking up the stairs and going to spin class. Doing exercise entails that you're putting your body through a little bit more of a rigorous or strenuous activity. So let's try for the exercise. Now, again, whatever gets you moving, any physical activity is a step towards better health. Over at the offices of Bridge to Health New Mexico, we have a list of fun classes that you can come to. Uh, we offer everything from Zumba to Jazzercise to activities for balance. Um, there is a class that is very similar to a yoga Pilates fusion class. Feel free to drop by or look us up online. Um, even call us up and we'll gladly give you a list of the classes that you can attend. We have all different kinds of packets that you can opt for. And um, if you have medical insurance, most medical insurances can and will cover the exercise that you want. So being physically active is one of the most important actions a person can take to improve their health. Evidence shows that physical activity is associated with a range of immediate and long-term benefits, including better sleep, better mood, healthier weight, lower risk of chronic disease, and the prevention of a really, really long list of chronic diseases that are very hard to treat medically. When you incorporate a combination of aerobic muscle strengthening and bone strengthening activities into a weekly routine, it ensures that everybody is building endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility. We need all of these to keep our bodies working. Remember, our bodies, think of our bodies as a machine. If a machine is set to sit there for a long time, what happens to all machines? They, they lose their functions. They start, when it, a machine is inactive for a long time, a lot of their parts start breaking down or they get rusty. On the other hand, if you're using a machine, it stays in better conditions. And if there's something that's not working right, it is a lot easier to realize it than a machine that's been sitting in the back of the corner of your house for months or years. Everyone from children and adolescents to adults and seniors benefit from consistent weekly physical activity. Let me repeat that. Everyone benefits from consistent weekly physical activity. Now, the type, the intensity, the duration, and the amount of physical activity necessary varies from age, comfort, and ability level. Everybody needs, everybody has different needs. And that is also part of exercise. Sometimes you'll need a little bit more aerobic exercises. Sometimes you'll need a little bit more of muscle strength. 
Some people need to build more endurance. It depends on your body. It depends on your need. It depends on your sex and your age. We'll get into that, but you need to consider that when starting a new activity. And as always, it is important to keep in mind that whenever you're going to start a new physical activity, it is very important for you to consult your medical provider and talk to them about what you're thinking about, and they'll be able to guide you as to what you need and what would be best that adapts to those needs. So what are the health benefits of physical activity? We talked about immediate and we talked about long-term. Immediate benefits of physical activity, we can think about sleep, improve sleep right away, anxiety and mood, they, you feel less anxiety, you have less prone to depression, and you're also feeling happier. It improves your blood pressure by reducing it. Now, what kind of benefits does it have long term? Regular activity provides very, very important health benefits for chronic disease prevention. We mentioned this already. It improves your brain health. How? It reduces the risk of developing dementia, including Alzheimer's, and reduces the risk of depression. It helps with your heart health. How? It lowers the risks of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. It also helps with cancer prevention. It lowers the risks of at least eight cancers. Talking about bladder, breast, colon, endometrium, esophagus, kidney, lung, and stomach, at least. It helps you keep a healthy weight, might even reduce the risk of weight gain, and sometimes, alongside with a good diet, it helps you lose weight. We'll see this further along. It also improves bone strength. It improves the health of your bones. You'll see exercise helps your bone combat osteoporosis and a lot of the bone problems that are caused by having brittle bones. And of course, it helps you with balance and coordination, which on the long run reduces the risks of falls. Now these, like I said, are only a few. We can talk for much longer than half an hour, which I think we will in the next session about the benefits of um, exercise. So let's go over, I mean, we're gonna go over them very superficially today. So how much physical activity do I need to experience health benefits? So older adults, meaning 65 and older, for them, it makes it easier to perform daily tasks, for example, eating, bathing, toileting, dressing, even moving around the house. Remember again, always consult with your doctor or physician before starting any physical activity. Per week, older adults should aim for 150 to 300 minutes of low to moderate intensity physical activity. That includes aerobic activity, bone and muscle strengthening activities. Think about a jazzercise class. Think about a very small amount of weight training that'll help you strengthen your muscles and your bone. Aerobic activity builds endurance and keeps weight at a healthy level, while strengthening the lower body and the core can help prevent falls and injuries. Now, what about adults 18 to 65? 
adults should aim for about pretty much the same amount of time, 150 to 300 minutes a week, but it should be of moderate activity. In general, adults should sit less and move more, avoiding long periods of inactivity when possible. Everybody's heard about the new fame uh, where people are starting to incorporate um, standing desks in their office. This is one of the reasons. When you're standing, you're a little bit more physical active than when you're sitting. Think about that. So when you're in your office, how much can you do standing up? How much can you move around? Even if it's 10 minutes before your lunch break or during your lunch break um, of you running around the office, it helps. For active adults, health benefits include the accrue of those exceeding 300 minutes per week of moderate physical activity. Additionally, adults should do muscle strengthening activities twice a week and try to engage all of the major muscle groups. What does this mean? It means the older we become, the more we need to incorporate aerobic activity. And the younger we are, or I'm gonna say 18 to 65, remember, adults, we need more of a moderate activity. We need something that's gonna keep us just slightly more active. And also, of course, include a little bit more muscle strengthening. Now, what about children? Children, we're talking 3 to 17, have a lot more energy. We all know this. And it is recommended that they get 60 minutes of moderate physical activity each day. Each day. We're not talking week here. We're talking about a day. Now, there's a variety of age-appropriate appropriate activities, and we should address with these activities aerobic endurance and bone strengthening. We can talk about running, jumping, basketball, soccer, jump rope, or hopscotch. They're all physical activities that are conducive to strengthening bones. We need something that's going to be repetitive and it's going to be something that is going to engage all of their muscles and make them stronger. They have the energy for it. Us adults, as we grow older, we know we lose a lot of, of that energy, but the kids can do this. So just engage them. Keep them going. 60 minutes a day, people. Let them run outside in the yard. Let them face the dog for 20 minutes. Let them run to the mailbox and back. Have them take that scooter out. Have them take that bike out. Now, we're going to start with the brain. Why is exercise good for the brain? Exercise not only changes your body, it changes your mind, your attitude, and your mood. It is the more, most potent and underutilized antidepressant. And you know what? Like it says here, it's free. So look at the image on the right with the brain. So when you exercise, we're going to start with the text on the left. It says north, nor norepinephrine is released, it's a hormone, it improves attention, perception, and motivation. Now, after that, brain-derived neurotropic factors are released and they protect and repair the neurons from injury and degeneration. What does that mean? It helps our brain be stronger. It helps our brain not only protect itself from being hurt, but also from dying out. Now, these hormones combine and it helps you grow brain cells. It helps you regulate your mood 
and provides mental clarity. Let me go through that again. It helps you grow brain cells. That means that when you exercise, there is more brain matter in there that can help you be in a better mood and be more clear. clear. Uh, um, you know how people thought, talk about brain fog? Exercise deletes it. So the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain concerned with learning and memory, grows. When you exercise, the hippocampus grows. Remember, we're creating new brain cells. So it grows in size, but it has to be done with regular exercise over time. Now, the hippocampus, remember, it is what regulates learning and memory. So what does that mean? The more brain cells we create, the more we can learn and the more we remember what we learned. Now, look at the other side of the chart. Endorphins are released, dulling the sensation of pain. What does that mean? It means if there's any chronic pain in your body, you will be dulling it out. You will feel it less. Serotonin is released. It enhances your mood. And then blood flow to the brain increases and it delivers more oxygen and nutrients and it improves all of the waste removal. So you get more oxygen to your brain. It works better. Anything that's in there that's clogging your brain and neurons and to that matter, your whole body is moved better and the waste is removed and your body and your brain, for the same reason, gets oxygen. And then, of course, dop dopamine is released, which improves motivation, focus, and learning. All these are released when you're exercised. Dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, the BDNF. And then all these help your brain grow. Think about that for a moment. More memory, more attitude, better mood, more motivation, more focused. What else would you want? There's not a pill in this world that can give you all those for free. So what are 10 benefits of physical activity? Boost your memory. It prevents illnesses. It improves depression and anxiety. It increases life, longer life. Prevents cancers. It aids weight loss. It helps you quit smoking. It improves your strength. It reduces the risks of falls. It reduces the risk of heart disease. This is just an image to wake you up, people. Physical activity, exercise. Now, what else does exercise do? It strengthens your bones and muscles. Remember that we talked about this? It helps your your body. As you age, it is important to protect your bones, your joints, and your muscles. Not only do they support your body and help you mood, you move, but keeping bones, joints, and muscles healthy can help you ensure that you're able to do activities of your daily life and be active. Research shows that doing aerobic muscle strengthening and bone strengthening activity, at least in a moderate intense level, can slow the loss of bone density that comes with age. So it doesn't only strengthen your muscles, it strengthens your bones, the density, they get stronger and thicker. It builds strong and healthy muscles. Muscle strengthening activities can help you increase or maintain your muscle mass and strength. Slowly increasing the amount of weight and number of repetitions you do will give you even more benefits, no matter your age. Remember, the more muscle mass we have, the less fat mass we have, which means we're gonna be more active, we're gonna burn more calories faster, and we're going to be able to lose, maintain, or stay healthy 
for a longer time. Benefits of exercise on skin and hair. This is, I'm going to say, it can be superficial, but it does it. There is a way of free, natural, easy way that you can get glowing skin and stay beautiful. And it starts with an E. It costs nothing. It leaves you feeling breathless, but refreshed. Exercise. Exercise is a deterrent of wrinkles, fine lines, and sagging skin. How? It supports the production of collagen. Why go to the groceries and buy your collagen in pills or your powder? You don't need that. Go outside. Walk fast. Grab that bike that's been sitting in your garage. Go out for a spin. You strengthen and tone the muscles between your, be, beneath the skin, and it makes the skin look healthier. Not only looks, it is healthier. Additionally, it creates sweat. Sweat cleans out pores and removes dead skins. It removes oils and chemicals which you have over your skin, and they all build up over time. So it basically cleans out your skin. It has a revitalizing effect. Regular exercise also means your blood circulation is improved to all your extremities, your fingers, your toes, for example, your fingernails and your toenails. So that means they're going to grow healthier and faster and stronger. It benefits the body because it improves just the strength of the circulatory and respiratory system, which means improved oxygenation. We already talked about this when we talked about how the exercise benefits the brain. It not only brings oxygen to your brain, but it brings it to all your body, including your skin, your hair, your extremities, everything. For your hair, it promotes blood circulation to the scalp and hair follicles, which means there's more nutrients coming to them, and it promotes hair growth, and it controls hair loss. It keeps the scalp healthy, and it prevents pore clogging. All this, again, it's oxygen-rich blood flow that rushes antioxidants to everywhere, and it destroys free radicals before they can damage any part of your body. Exercise increases your energy. Although it might seem counterproductive at first to exercise to have more energy, exercise helps release substances that allows us to be more away, awake and active all day. Exercise gives us an immediate energizing sensation, and you feel less tired by helping our heart, our cardiovascular system, work more efficiently by, again, supplying oxygen and other nutrients to the body. Even people that suffer progressive illnesses like cancer, AIDS, and multiple sclerosis. And of course, when your heart and lung health improves, you have more energy for your everyday activities. All you need is half an hour, and you will realize how much more energized you are after that little bit of physical activity. I'm not going to go through all of these, but suffice it to say, it reduces the risk of at least 30 chronic diseases, diabetes, obesity, coronary diseases, strokes, depression, asthma, cancer, rheumatism, osteoarthritis, Alzheimer's, breast cancer, blood pressure. All you got to do is Google it. How can exercise help with chronic disease? And you will see the list of everything that exercise helps with. Again, all you need is 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunch, and 10 minutes at night. 
or whatever fits your schedule. Mental health, we've already been through this, but it does not, it's very important that I stress it. It reduces your stress levels. It increases your energy levels. It reduces depression and increases good mood. It reduces anxiety, but increases self-esteem. It improves your sleep. It increases your confidence. You not only look better, but you feel better. It boosts your brain power. Remember what we talked, memory, learning, focus, clarity. And it, of course, it increases your well-being. How does the effect on your well-being? What is it? You grow. You self-accept better. You have better friendships. Depression helps with depression, helps with anxiety. You master something and it makes you feel in charge of the situations. It changes your attitude to the better. It helps with cognition. A lot of positive there. And mood. I know these seem repetitive, but it's important that we emphasize everything that exercise does for you. Sleep. Exercise or sleep better. They, if you are exercising vigorously, they are the people that report the best sleep. People that don't exercise are the people that are the sleepiest and have the highest re risk of sleep apnea. Less time sitting is associated with better sleep and health. Get up, people. Walk around. Exercising at any time of day is good for your sleep. And of course, it helps you lose weight. Now, don't expect exercise to be the magical pill when you're trying to lose what? It's not. You need to be able to combine it with a good portion size, with cutting down your carbs. Um, you need to do exercises like running, swimming, walking, and of course, weight training. Remember, the more physical activity we do, it increases the number of calories your body uses. So you burn off these calories. Again, physical activity increases the number of calories your body uses for energy or burns off. The burning of calories through physical activity combined with reducing the number of calories you eat creates a caloric deficit, which results in weight loss. So, to conclude, these are only 20, but believe me, people, all you need to do is remember you will realize from the first moment you get up and start exercising how your whole body is going to start feeling better. Sleep, mood, brain activity, bones, muscles, body fat reduces. It's going to increase your life. It's going to help you manage your pain. It's going to ward off viruses and chronic diseases. It's going to strengthen your heart. It's going to boost your mood. Remember, it's going to help with anxiety and depression. It's going to help you be more mobile by strengthening your bones and your muscle. It's going to improve your skin and hair and nails. It's going to help your body detoxify. It boosts your immune system. There is so many benefits of exercise. I cannot stress how many there are. So we will be going on to this again in the next session. We have a whole hour to talk about it again. So please, if you have any questions, any doubts, let me know.
I would be glad to clear them up for you. And yes, we will be going through this again with a little bit more detail. Thank you for your time. Don't forget comments and doubts down here. And uh, or you can stop at Bridge to Health New Mexico, 628 Riverside Drive, or you can give us a call, 505-591-4200. And you have a good day. Thank you for watching.